Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for Jeff Live here at the Jeff Council meeting in Washington, D.C. My name is Sarah Wyatt. I'm a biodiversity analyst with the Jeff, and I also coordinate our work with indigenous peoples. And I'm joined this afternoon by Giovanni Reyes. And Giovanni comes from the Philippines, and he is the president of the Philippines Consortium of the Indigenous and Community Conserved Areas Organization. He's also a member of our Indigenous Peoples Advisory Group, and he's been very involved in a Jeff project there in the Philippines. So thank you for joining me, Giovanni. Thank you. Thank um, you for this opportunity. Maybe you could start out by telling us a little bit about your community, where you come from, and the work that you do. Uh, I'm Giovanni Reyes, and uh, I come from a limestone valley uh, 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 called uh, Sagada, which is located in the uh, Cordillera region of uh, northern Philippines. The community cuts across uh, pine forests, uh, rice terraces, uh, creeks and rivers. And uh, it's a cool, uh, cool area up north uh, in the northern part of the Philippines. And uh, my work as uh, the uh, president of the uh, consortium is to uh, ensure the full and effective uh, participation of indigenous communities in the planning, especially in uh, conservation planning. And um, recently we had this uh, uh, GEF financed uh, uh, Philippine ICCA project which involved the mapping, the identification and mapping of uh, indigenous people's community conserved areas. These conserved areas are uh, portions of ancestral domains uh, which indigenous peoples themselves place a very high spiritual and uh, cultural value. And because of that uh, uh, value that they put on these uh, sites, it resulted into their conservation. So it's an effective means of uh, utilizing the uh, knowledge of indigenous peoples to, uh, to uh, conserve uh, critically environmental areas. And um, we do so by uh, translating, translating indigenous peoples' knowledge about, the, about their terrain into its physical dimension in the form of a uh, 3D model. So they will see what is in their minds when they translate their knowledge into its physical dimension in the form of a map. And uh, this will be later used as an evidence-based uh, planning process. Uh, apart from mapping, we also do uh, training. Uh, for example, on the use of a geographic positioning system so that knowledge and science will be merged together to, uh, towards their empowerment, towards empowerment of our communities. So you've already touched a bit on this, but why do you think it's really important to focus on supporting indigenous people when trying to protect the global environment? It is important to note that 80% uh, of uh, the planet's biodiversity coincide or are located in indigenous people's territories. This means a lot. And uh, the support for indigenous peoples means that we are, we will be effectively combating the uh, uh, impacts of climate change, uh, which means that uh, uh, recognition of indigenous peoples uh, traditional governance systems means we, we are also uh, strengthening the uh, conservation of nature. And what are some of the challenges that you've seen that indigenous people face when they are trying to, you know, conserve their lands, you know, maintain their livelihoods? And the problem that uh, sometimes uh, uh, indigenous peoples are persistent in, in bringing out uh, include uh, policy conflicts. Like uh, there is protected area systems, and then there is mining, and then there is this uh, indigenous people's rights law. So there, there is a conflict between protected area systems and uh, indigenous people's rights and mining. And that is a uh, very uh, uh, challenging uh, aspect there, uh, because uh, when the protected area systems are, are uh, 
uh, enforced on these territories, they overlap with the management systems of indigenous peoples. And more so that the uh, national park systems and protected area systems uh, uh, tend to uh, uh, segregate people from their interactions with nature. And we have been stating for a fact that the reason why we still have few forests and rivers left is because of the interaction between, between uh, indigenous peoples and their, and, their, uh, and their territory. Now here comes a program that says no touch, no belong, no, no entry. It prohibits you from, from, uh, from entering what uh, to you is historically a, uh, a sacred, uh, sacred site. And when indigenous people say this is a sacred site, they will protect it to the end because it's like a cathedral to them in much the same way as uh, the Christians would look at their churches as sacred. It's the same way as uh, how indigenous peoples look at their uh, mountains and uh, wo uh, forests as, uh, as cathedral, as, as sacred as that. So, and kind of to maybe shift gears a little bit, uh, we have talked about the importance of working with indigenous peoples to protect biodiversity, but indigenous peoples are also very important in trying to fight climate change and trying to adapt to climate change. Do you have any examples of how you've seen you've seen this in the Philippines? Well, the uh, the forests uh, are very effective in uh, as a buffer zone uh, to the impacts of climate change, like severe storms. Uh, they have this knowledge about changing patterns uh, in local uh, uh, climate and they provide more valuable information about, uh, about the risks and vulnerabilities so that it helps in informing policy makers how to uh, develop uh, adaptation and mitigation uh, 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 laws, uh, for example. So it's not... Uh, it's not uh, surprising that the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity and Ecological Services would say that uh, indigenous peoples' communities are in a better uh, position to inform, uh, uh, more uh, in a better position to inform about, uh, about changes in, in the communities where the impact is felt most. Yeah, and I know that in the Philippines there has been um, there's been some efforts through the project to also talk about the benefits of, of water, the water that is produced out of the forests, protected by indigenous peoples, and to you know that that water is really important, right, for yeah. for agriculture, for water security, and that many people are depending on it, not just the people there. So. Yeah, the, uh, in the Philippines, the, uh, the watersheds coming from uh, uh, community uh, conserved areas are benefiting about 20 to 25 million uh, Filipinos uh, in terms of uh, providing water to the lowlands. Uh, so uh, we also provide uh, support for food security for agricultural, agricultural areas. So if you destroy... If you destroy our mountains, then there will be, uh, there will be no more water for, for the agricultural lands. Uh, there will be uh, lesser carbon sink and there will be more severe uh, disturbances when, when you destroy this, uh, these mountains. And indigenous peoples uh, do not even know that uh, they are providing that much. Uh, so we are also thinking of payment for ecological services as, a, uh, as, as an aspect of our future uh, conservation plans. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, the project you've been working with has worked with the government quite yeah. extensively and with, and particularly with the protected area system, so with basically the national parks system. And how have you seen the people that you work with from the government, how, is their, how have their minds been changed about the importance of working with indigenous peoples and, the, and their role they can have in protecting biodiversity? Yeah, the, the officers of the uh, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, especially at the provincial level, uh, uh, became excited and uh, they learned much from indigenous peoples' uh, 
a method of uh, uh, protecting uh, the environment. Uh, it goes to say that uh, when you compare, when we compare the uh, biodiversity levels uh, between protected area systems and indigenous community conserved areas, the level of deforestation is higher in protected area systems and uh, compared to IPs. So that's where they get to know how, uh, how effective uh, indigenous knowledge can be in uh, natural uh, environmental uh, uh, protection. So I, I, I was of course happy that they adopted the process uh, that we have been doing, like inventory of resources, the participatory inventory of resources, which means that uh, indigenous peoples' communities uh, identify all the keystone species uh, in their territories to determine the state of health of the forest. And that inspired uh, officers uh, of government, especially the uh, uh, protected area superintendents and the provincial environment and regional officers uh, to adopt the process as part of their policy uh, uh, policy directions. Well, that's great. Yeah. And so I think for one last question, I wanted to ask you, since we're here, we're on Twitter and doing, using technology, sometimes people maybe don't think about indigenous peoples and technology. So I was wondering if you could maybe talk about how technology and young people are, and indigenous young people are involved in projects and, and work. Uh, the use of geographic positioning system especially uh, is very relevant to uh, indigenous peoples because uh, uh, they will use it as, uh, as a method or they use it as a tool to better identify the terrain. They have knowledge, traditional knowledge in identifying the meets and bounds of their terrains but they will use geographic positioning systems for more accuracy and uh, together with uh, the use of scientific methods and traditional knowledge uh, the better the uh, area is uh, uh, conserved. And that's how indigenous peoples are using technology. <laughs> oh, Maps great. and resource inventory, geographic positioning systems. <laughs> and I think I remember you telling me how you have the younger folks knowing the technology, being yes. able to use the GPS and yeah. talking with the, the elders yeah. about and learning from them as they're doing that. Yes. So it's a, it's a really nice mix of, yeah, of it's bringing a mix. people it's a, together. It's a good mix, yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the, the project that uh, the GEF uh, financed in the Philippines, because of indigenous people's participation, it put the government or it put the country in the forefront of inclusive conservation, at least for Asia, so that even the government of Myanmar uh, came to the Philippines and uh, studied how uh, indigenous communities uh, uh, established these models. And we hope that this can be replicated in other uh, countries as well. well. And I think that's a great note to end on. So thank you so much, Giovanni. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah.